we're reviewing special senses, and this is actually part two. In part one, we covered the first three. We looked at olfaction, which is our smell, and then we looked at hearing, and then we looked at equilibrium. So those first three. Now we're moving on to optic, which is our vision, and then getting into gustation, which is our taste. So we're covering vision and taste. And I showed this on the part one just to get an example of what cranial nerves are innervating or act upon in those special senses. Cranial nerve number two, my optic, is specifically for vision, and that nerve is coming and hitting the eyeball. So and then we'll look at the actual structure in the next picture. But as we look at it, it's going to connect and go through the sphenoid bone, through that optic canal, and we're translating ultimately at the occipital lobe. When we look at taste, there's three nerves that control it. Number seven, facial. Number nine, glossopharyngeal. And then number 10, which is vagus. So facial is handling the front of the tongue, the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. The glossopharyngeal is handling the back or the last third of the tongue on the posterior side. In the vagus, we see this more for infancy and then growing up for childhood early on, that the throat or the pharynx is monitoring taste. So that's the interpretation of our taste. We also have number five, which is trigeminal that could handle pain if you burn your tongue or something super spicy, trigeminal assists with that translation as well. So let's look at first the structures of the eye, and the eye is about the size of a ping pong ball, and we divide it up into three layers. And notice the body tends to do this a lot, that there's three layers to things. And as we look at this, we'll look at the three layers as two, three, and four, starting with number two is referring to the sclera, and that's the outside of my eye, the white that you see in my eye, which is that connective tissue. It's vascular, mostly on the anterior side, and that's why they show some of that redness here. And we know that when we get bloodshot eyes that this occurs as well. So number two is referring to the sclera. The sclera is part of what we call the fibrous tunic, which is continuous with the front of the eye that we call the cornea. And the cornea is very sensitive. It's got a lot of nerve receptors to it. We know that because if we poke your eye, it's very sensitive to touch, which is part of that defense mechanism of protecting your eye. The cornea is continuous with the sclera, and all of that we call the fibrous tunic. Number three is we get vascular, meaning more blood supply. Number three is referring to the choroid, so that middle layer, choroid, and it'll come up and it'll be continuous with part of this is called the ciliary body. That ciliary body is a smooth muscle that's helping to move the lens. So the lens is how we focus, but we have to move it, and we do it with that muscle tissue of the ciliary body. So we have sclera, then the middle choroid, which is our vascular tunic. And then as we get into number four, that third layer that continues over the interior of the eye, this is all the nervous tunic that we call the retina. When we look at histology, we'll learn that the retina is actually three sets of cells. So three layers of the eye, the fibrous tunic that includes the sclera and the cornea, the vascular tunic where we see more blood supply within the choroid, and the nervous tunic, which referring to like the nervous tissue, this is the retina for actually translation of what we see. Now, all of that retina is going to go to the posterior side, and this says optic nerve at number one here, but it's primarily just referring to where you would have blood supply, nerve supply, and that optic nerve is going to go and translate back to the occipital lobe. But I can't see the actual nerve tissue here, but this space is where I'd have the optic nerve. The other structures, as the light enters into the eye, it's going through that hole, the pupil, and we adjust the pupil based on how the ciliary body can move around it. And that's part of the iris, which is the color of the eye that wraps around the pupil. And you know this, when you look at the mirror in the bathroom, you turn the light off and on, you can watch as your eyes dilate or constrict. You're adjusting how much light comes in and out of the eye. The light is entering through that hole called the pupil. The iris, the color of the eye, is because of the pigment melanin, and that's no different than my hair, my skin, how I have just by genetics of what colors my, my eyes are going to be. So as I look at the basic structures, now we can move on to the histology of it. And really what I'm going to do is take the posterior side and just look at the layers and break it down again into the fibrous tunic, the vascular tunic, and the nervous tunic. If this is the outside of the bob, the eye, and I'm taking this 
box here, and this is this entire box. The outside of the eye, which is the whites of my eye, is called the sclera. So the sclera, as I go deep, my inner layer with the vascular tunic, that's the choroid. And then I get into the nervous tunic, which is all of the retina. Now we expand on the retina. Remember I said it's three types of cells. So it's called the rods and cones, which are photoreceptors, bipolar cells, and then ganglion cells. So as light comes in and enters the eye, it's going to actually move through these cells until it finally hits what we call the photoreceptors, so the ones that are receiving the light, photoreception. There's two types of photoreceptors, my rods and my cones. Cones are for color. They're more acuity to them, meaning they have sharper vision. But I remember C for C, cones for color, the letter C. Rods are for light and dark. Not as sharp as the cones, but they're beneficial for light and dark. So rods and cones are my photoreceptors. And then I have these supporting cells, bipolar and ganglion cells. So as the light enters and we translate it, it actually goes backwards to communicate with the optic nerve. And so then the optic nerve then passes through and it's going to communicate with the brain. So when we look at this, we can see these sharp layers of dark cells. These are actually the nuclei of the cells, and then they're elongated. Remember when we talked about our different types of neurons, we said there's anexonal, bipolar, pseudounipolar, and then multipolar. We see a lot of bipolar neurons inside the eye. When we look at this, this dark section are the nuclei, but the rest of this is the cell body of those rods and cones. So same here. As we look at the nuclei, it extends further. So as we focus on the dark sections, we're naming the three types of cells that make up the entire retina. Because the retina is our nervous tunic, then we have the choroid, and then we have the sclera. Histology of the eye. Now let's look at gustation or taste. Pretty simple. When we look at the tongue, when we feel those bumps on our tongue, we said that those are called papilla. Papilla are the bumps that we can feel, and we organize them in three different sections. On the posterior side, they're called circumvillet, or just villet papilla. In the middle, fungiform, because they're supposed to look like a mushroom or a fungi, a fungus. Filiform towards the anterior side. Books that you read 40 years ago would say that you taste in different sections, meaning you taste sweet on the tip of your tongue, salt on the back. We've learned that it's all throughout the tongue, that I can taste salt, spicy, bitter, sweet, anywhere throughout the tongue. Now, as we organize all these bumps, and I look at it from a histology standpoint, these bumps, and to me, these look like mushrooms here, these three, and this is half of one, these are all papilla. So within a papilla, now I have these taste buds. So these round buds within the papilla are called taste buds. And the taste buds, we have about 10,000 of them in our tongue. They're the ones that are actually containing the gustatory receptor cells for chemicals. So what are we tasting? So we look at a papilla, it's actually lined with stratified squamous epithelium, stratified squamous, and it'll replace itself about every week or so, maybe five days, seven days, depending on you. As we get older, this doesn't replace as fast, just like any part of our body. But as I burn my tongue, we know that rough sensation goes away pretty quick because epithelial tissue has the ability to generate very quickly. So the lining where the food's touching on my tongue is stratified squamous epithelium. When the food drops down in between as we're breaking down with our teeth and our tongue, the roof of our mouth and our saliva, it enters into these taste buds by way of taste pores. So taste pores are opening into my taste buds and that's where I have gustatory receptor cells. These are chemoreceptors. When we looked at vision, those were photoreceptors. So as I experience all the taste, it's being translated then to the appropriate nerves either cranial nerve number seven, facial number nine, glossopharyngeal, or vagus 10. So this is histology of the tongue as we look at gustation. So here's your vision and here's your taste.